Welcome to Energizing Life with AKR Fitness. I'm Jace. I'm Lindsay. And we are back with another special episode. Yes. We have got AKR member Jill in the house. Hi, everyone. <laughs> welcome to the podcast. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for being with us. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> most welcome. How are you feeling? Um, a little bit nervous, but it's I'm right. sure once we get going, it'll all be great. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Brilliant. Lindsay, how are you today? Yeah, feeling good. Looking forward to learning a little bit more about Jill's story and letting the, yeah, the listeners I'm, I'm get involved. Excited to dive into your deepest, darkest secrets and <laughs> I know everything about you. <laughs> Jill, tell us who you are. So I'm Jill Hughes and I've been a member with AKR since, I guess, September last year. 31st of August. Oh, well, very hey, close then. On. 31st <laughs> of August. Yeah, so I, I absolutely love coming along to AKR. It's a great place to be and um, I've just learned so much about everything, me and fitness, and there's so much to say. I hope I don't ramble too much during your podcast. <laughs> we'll rein you in, Jill. So we'll rein you. Let's uh, put AKR aside for a minute. Okay. Tell us about what fitness and health and nutrition and everything was like before you both take care. So there's, there's two sides to that. So there was a, a health and fitness side of me before, and then there was the middle part before AKR, and then there was AKR. So before... Start to start. <laughs> yeah, start right, at the right very from start. the beginning, Jill. I did have... I was really keen on health and fitness, and I find out at the back then it was more around... If there was a challenge, I wanted to be part of it. I was the we had the corporate decathlon at work, and I would always be the person What's who that? would. And we had this. Um, the a lot of the oil companies in Aberdeen would take part in this corporate decathlon. So there would be ten different events throughout the year. Against different companies. All the different companies. That sounds amazing. Against one another. <laughs> How do I sign up for one of them? <laughs> I don't know if they do it anymore, but there would be all sorts of stuff, and some of it would be. Um, not quite the stuff that you would ca- count as a sport, but darts. And then there was things like orienteering <laughs> and lots of different things that you would get to be part of. Jill, can I stop you there? How far back are we going here? So that's probably 10, 12 years ago. Okay. Yeah, so that's that would have been around about then where there was lots of different challenges going on. I did running, half marathons. We did charity events for all sorts of different things. And I was always keen to be part of all of that. Type, type of things. Was it the social aspect that you enjoyed? It was the social aspect and it was the challenge and it gave me motivation to do something that was health and fitness related. So I you know, raised money for charity to do the half marathon, but I also got to be fit and healthy while I was doing it. So yeah, there was lots of aspects to mm-hmm. it. But yeah, then work kind of got in the way and yeah, I know it has that effect, it doesn't does. it? So I took a job in Denmark, which I absolutely adored, but work was so busy and I was in a place that I didn't really know that well. Um, fitness almost took a back seat. And, and after, that, after that sort of time, yeah, I put weight on. Fitness became more difficult to fit into my day. How long were you in Denmark for? I was in Denmark for just over three years, but I also then moved to Qatar and then I was in France and I moved <laughs> around a little bit with work. So yeah. There was no routine to my life, basically. And because there was no routine, there was no going to the gym, there was no getting out running, there was lots of things that I just, I tried to fit in sporadically, but it wasn't really working for me. So, and also being away from any sort of home base, you're not really cooking for yourself, you're going out and eating, you want to be around people rather than at home in a hotel room by yourself in an evening. So you would go out and have dinner, you would have a glass of wine with your dinner. (laughs) And then before you know it, I was forced to and heavier. I didn't feel as though I had any level of fitness. I had zero confidence to go to the gym. And yeah, I wasn't feeling that great about myself. How was that going from someone who, you said that you were keen on health and fitness to not at all? What did that do for you? It was a horrible feeling. It was just... I I guess it crept up on me slowly. I didn't realise until one day I went out for a run and thought, oh my goodness, this is, this is, I can't do this anymore. I wasn't able, um, I wasn't able to do it. And that then made me feel as though I just couldn't do anything. So it was a horrible feeling to have known what it felt like to be fit and healthy, to then not have it anymore and not to have realised that you'd lost it. It, it sort of crept up on me. So yeah, it wasn't a nice feeling. And then obviously I'd gone on a holiday <laughs> and it was a, because I was working so much, it was, I'm not a very organized person when it comes to something like that. But that's, I like to be that way. So I was going on holiday and basically just threw a bunch of clothes into my suitcase. And when I got 
to my vacation, I found that some of the clothes didn't fit me. And that was a really horrible feeling because I obviously they had fitted me once upon a time <laughs> and it wasn't nice to feel as though the, the trousers that I, were, I was wearing was sort of slicing me in half and then when I got back from that holiday I made a deal with myself that on the 28th of December 2019 that was the day that I got back from that holiday and then I was going to give myself a year to get back in shape and get my fitness back again and to lose the weight and yeah then lots of other things got in the way that year so I did actually plan to join AKR, but um, just maybe days before I was allowed to come in for to visit the gym, the lockdown <coughs> happened. So I had to try and do other things. So I was trying all sorts of different things to lose weight, and I did lose weight, and I did get fit and healthy. But it wasn't there. Wa it wasn't sustainable. It wasn't something that I could build as a routine. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. It wasn't the way to do it. But what were you doing that it wasn't sustainable? <sighs> the food that I was eating, I didn't understand enough about nutrition to know that, you know, I was probably not eating enough food and maybe doing too much exercise for the amount of calories that I was eating. It just wasn't a healthy way to lose weight and it definitely wasn't something that you could carry on doing forever. It was more of a, I guess, a, a band-aid over the problem <laughs> that I was experiencing. Dill, if I could just sort of summarise what you've said there, um, going way back, you you seen yourself as the person that exercised, enjoyed it, and you were doing it to help charities, but also doing it for yourself. Yeah. And then you got a job in Denmark where life on your work life took over that balance and you didn't find a routine with it. You couldn't get a structure behind your health and fitness and it kind of went by the wayside, if you like. Yeah. And you were in Denmark for how many years? I was and with guitar in <laughs> France as well. So altogether, being away from Aberdeen, it was more than five years altogether. Yeah. Okay, so through that five-year period of living out of a bag, it seems you yeah. just couldn't find the structure that you were used to before when you were planted in one place. Yeah, absolutely. Then through all of that, you kind of lost sight of what exercise meant to you and how it made you feel. And then from there, in a... A bit of a rush you were going on holiday at the end of 2019 you packed the bag really quickly didn't really think about it and when you got there you tried on these trousers and that was maybe a, a pivotal point in your mindset and Absolutely. shift yeah, yeah definitely it was seems the, like there was a turning point there when you, you you said make a deal with myself yeah and tell me a little bit more about that so it was um, not to be eating out so much, to be making more, cooking more food at home, to be drinking more water, to do, I guess I overwhelmed myself a little bit trying to do all of the good things that I could do to be a healthier person. Actually, when I got back from that holiday, the first thing I did was downloaded the Couch to 5K app because running was something that I always loved doing anyway. And I felt really quite sad that I wasn't able to do it anymore. So Couch to 5K, that was the thing that kind of got me feeling a bit more confident again. Mm -hmm. um, I was still working in Denmark at the time and traveling back and forth on a weekly basis. So trying to fit in exercise, it meant that I would work all day. I would, and it wasn't enjoyable really to go to the gym after work and do your Couch to 5K runs. So what but made you? Because I just didn't feel good about myself. I didn't feel happy about how I looked and how I felt and that I wasn't, I wouldn't have been able to, I just wasn't able to do the things that I wanted to do and I felt really horrible. What sort <laughs> so of things are you talking about there, Jill? Anything, like that holiday that I went on, mm -hmm. I felt as though that was something I could have done before, but I think I just really knocked my confidence with, I don't know, just not feeling good about myself but the deal the deal was to <laughs> not eat chocolate not go out for dinner the not, extreme like all of the stuff that I was doing that actually I quite enjoyed it you know going out for dinner and a glass of wine is a great thing to do <laughs> eating a bar of chocolate I love it I still do but um yeah it was to try and cut out those bad habits that had gone to the extreme and do more of the healthier things so instead of going out for dinner I would go to the gym run on the treadmill and go home and cook myself dinner instead. So it was making those changes, but it wasn't necessarily enjoyable. It was a means to an end, really, to get back in shape again. Yeah, that's kind of, that was the deal that I made with myself. So, and it, and it did, to a certain extent, work. I was losing weight and I was 
feeling healthier and fitter and I felt more confident I did the couch to 5k I finished it and I was so pleased that I did finish it were you proud of yourself yeah I really was because by then I was able to run 5k again and that was something that you mentioned you loved yeah, yeah, really, I did. And actually, before, when I was fit, fitter and healthier, a 10k run would have been the run that I would have gone out and done in, e- in an evening. But now, at least I had that 5k run. I was able to do that again. So did you feel like running was the only way that you could lose that weight? Yeah, I did. Because Why I'd, did you feel that? Well, I didn't, <clears throat> know, I didn't know about other ways to do it. I knew that you could go to gym classes and go to all these body pumps and all these other things but I didn't I didn't have a gym so I, mm-hmm. I wasn't going to go to any of those places there was nothing in debt I wasn't in one place long enough actually to join a gym to be part of something like that so yeah and then and then I was at home for quite a long period working from home um and doing anything that I could find on YouTube to work out to <laughs> just running around my living room like a crazy was person this, this, the, I'm just trying to get my um, timings right. So you came back from Holiday at the end of 2019. You made a deal with yourself, right, this is it. Yeah. Um, you went from the extreme to eating out, not really looking after yourself, to now the opposite end of the scale where you're like, right, this is it, I'm going to yeah. do it. So is this just turning into 2020 now? So yeah, I did the, so the Couch to 5K, I did from, jet from well, the 28th of December 2019. And then that was the sort of three months, nine weeks, or however long it is. Um, that I did the couch to 5k and I did finish that before the lockdown happened basically so Mm -hmm. then I was able to run after that but apart from running there wasn't a gym for me to go to there wasn't really anywhere to go so I was doing YouTube workouts and doing yoga and doing all sorts of different Mm -hmm. things but it it was it wasn't fixing my it wasn't fixing my problem basically <laughs> my problem was more than just that it was the fact that i didn't understand nutrition and i didn't and running and doing those things at home were never really going to fix it but i didn't i would never have known that had i not ever come to akr so being here at akr and and lifting weights and doing all sorts of different things here i know that there's something different mm-hmm. i wouldn't have necessarily known it before I wouldn't have known how to find it either, so I was. I'm really happy that I did. <laughs> yeah. You've actually um, just touching on when you started. You, I think if if my mind serves me right, you were meant to have your strategy session the week before we went into lockdown. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I think it, I think it was Mike that called and said, "Well, sorry, we're just about to go into lockdown." Yeah. I was so disappointed. It was a way to say, "Yeah, tell me how that felt." Well. I was I was really disappointed because I had if I I actually if I remember back long before I'd actually looked into AKR because I live close by and I thought maybe there's I didn't know what kind of gym it was but maybe there was some sort of drop-in sessions that I could come to I didn't know what it was all about Mm -hmm. so I had looked into it but then when I heard more about it I knew that that was the sort of thing that I needed and that that was something that would work for me what did you feel you needed from it? What what was giving out that vibe? The routine, the, the fact that there was some route that I could have that routine in my life and that it was close by, it was accessible, it was something that I knew that was achievable for me to get to the gym. <laughs> and other friends I know that, that come here were raving about how great it was. So the feedback and the reviews that I'd heard from other people made it, made it, made me feel as though it was an exciting thing to be part of. So you were super excited for this strategy session, all going well, that was the day, you get this phone call, but you've got to this point now where you have finished the Couch to 5K, you're doing bits and bobs online with um, training yoga, hit that sort of thing. Now you've been given this blow, this, yeah, I managed to go, and then lockdown happened. Like, how? Tell me, what was? How was that lockdown for you in terms of your training, and and how did you stay with it? So actually, it was through Mary that I stayed with it. So one of the other members at AKR, um, basically, I had to do something, and running was the thing that I knew that I could do. So we just went out and ran. <laughs> we ran <laughs> up hills and we ran around the countryside. <laughs> exactly. We did loads of running, and while we were running, she would also tell me lots about AKR as well. So I was buzzing to be part, part we, we of it. We paid her to do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, so I knew that there was going to be a time when I could come to the gym, and all of that just made it more exciting because my fitness levels were getting better. I was 
doing things at home that were probably not right things for me to be doing, but I did them anyway to just keep going. And I think the fact that I knew that AKR was going to be opening mm -hmm. at some point meant that I've got to keep my fitness up I've, because this, this, is the, this is the thing I'm sort of aiming for now. And in amongst all of that, I started to enjoy exercise again and I started to feel good about myself and I started to feel like I had a level of fitness that I didn't have before. And those good feelings about exercise, they started to return and that made it even more exciting mm -hmm. about AKR opening again. So you so had a little accountability buddy in yes, Nari that yes. helped you maintain motivation throughout that, that yeah. period of lockdown and still being, if, I mean correct me if I'm wrong, a bit more mindful with your nutrition but still not understanding it completely. Yeah definitely not understanding it but knowing that I needed to eat less chocolate, <laughs> drink less wine, <laughs> all of but that why? sort of stuff. <laughs> and the thought of AKR opening again give you the incentive to be like Okay, I want to start this off the bet in the best, the best way that I yeah. can. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let me take this to then your your first time finally getting into the the arch. What was your thoughts and your feelings? What was you expecting? What was it for you? Well, I had no idea what to expect, despite the fact that Mary had told me so much about <laughs> it. I honestly <laughs> through didn't through her lens. <laughs> through her lens, yeah. I still didn't. I didn't know what to expect, but it was just. The minute I got here, everyone was smiling. So that was the first thing that I noticed. Everyone was really happy. Um, it was calm. It, was, it wasn't It was like any other gym that I've ever been to. Um, Tell me a little bit about that. What do you mean? So the, the, like a long time ago, I would have been a member of one of the other gyms that would be, well, you would go in, run on a treadmill and leave again. That would be my experience of being in a gym. There wasn't, and it was the same when I was li living in Denmark as well, there was a gym in, in, in the office. So you mm -hmm. could go to the gym and you could use the cardio machine and machines and equipment, but I didn't know how to use any of the other things that were there and it all scared me a little bit. But then walking into the gym here, everyone's using all of the equipment and everyone's doing it properly and they've got people there correcting them if they're not doing it properly. That was something that... I felt was really important to me because I knew that I wasn't doing what I was doing properly <laughs> and I needed to learn how to do it. How did you know that? Because I, because I was just copying people on YouTube. <laughs> there was no way that I was doing it properly. I wasn't, I, w I definitely wasn't doing it properly because I, well, I can definitely say that I wasn't looking back on it now mm -hmm. and the level of fitness and the improvement that I made being here at AKR mm -hmm. versus just messing about at home basically <laughs> at least you were doing something at home. yeah and, and I was and one of the things that I've always had in my head is that you just just keep moving just move sometimes if I didn't even want to do any of the workouts that I'd planned in my day I would go out for a walk mm -hmm. during the lockdown I did do a lot of walking and a lot of running because that's something that I, can, I know that I can walk successfully, so <laughs> I, can do that without, around, right? I can do that without too much of a challenge, most of the time at least, so yeah. So yeah, you were excited coming through the door because yeah. you heard so much about it, but you were still a little bit like, oh, what's it going to be like? Yeah, it's but normal. as soon as I got here, everything, I, it was, everything just looked great. The people, you guys were so friendly and happy and put me completely at ease and, and after that I was, there was nothing scary about it. It was, walking through the door was the scariest thing and then once I was here, everything else was perfect. I, I honestly can't, I wish I'd found AKR so much sooner, I wish I'd been here sooner, I wish I'd had that experience so that I could have that routine and know that even though even, the, even though in the lockdown I mm -hmm. was moving and doing things at home, ha having the support of something like AKR, I, obviously I can compare what it was like to have been in the two different lockdowns without AKR and then with AKR. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the difference for me, there was so much that you guys did to keep us mo motivated during that lock the second lockdown where the gyms were closed again. And that routine, I had the routine, I had the consistency, I got up every morning and did my Zoom workout and I was happy to do it and I mm -hmm. think that that's something that maybe was was a lot different to what it was before. I was forcing myself to do it before because I felt as though I had to, whereas now I, I just want to. <laughs> I don't have any, it makes me happy and it makes me feel good, it makes me smile. <laughs> I've, I just feel so much happier than I, than I ever thought I could have with fitness and yeah. 
that's that's how I feel about it. <laughs> Thank you for being honest. I appreciate that. It's really nice to hear. And um, let's just delve a little bit deeper in, into the into the two lockdowns. You touched on having routine there and and what it, what it meant for you. But it was what else helped throughout that time being a part of something? Well, everyone everyone helped one another really because we were all. Um, I don't know, we were all in the same situation. When you got onto Zoom, you were, you, you might have been alone for most of the day at home, but when you were in your Zoom class, there was other people there and you could talk to them and you could ask how their days had been. But having the check-ins with you, Lindsay, I think we did that most weeks actually. Yeah. Um, that, when there was down days or days that you felt as though things were not going so good, mm -hmm. you, having those conversations, helped to give you more focus, helped to just put you on the right track again. And one of the things that we did was that, that monthly, in February, I think it was, the daily tracker. The tracker. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And that really, that really, really worked for me. And actually, that was the point where I probably learned more about the nutrition side of things and all of the macros and, and what I was supposed mm -hmm. to eat and what meant, what, meant what, what it meant to eat correctly. Uh -huh. And that's something that you had never been able to grasp before yeah, is that it, right absolutely mm -hmm. it was something that i did it wasn't so much i couldn't grasp it i didn't understand it i didn't i just knew that i was eating food and i would try to eat healthy food but i didn't necessarily know that there was the right amount of different things to eat so having that tracker that allowed me to see how much protein i was eating see how much carbs and fat i was eating mm -hmm. and 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 looking every single day at the amount of steps that you've done and how that affects your body all of that together i think seeing it all down in one spreadsheet that do you just, like a spreadsheet yeah, <laughs> yeah I, do, I do kind of like a spreadsheet yeah <laughs> but, but see, being able to see it being able to see it and having that visualization of your journey throughout that month mm -hmm. and, and the, what you'd achieved by the end of it that have having that in front of your eyes there's no arguing with the, with the evidence that's right there so one of the things that we sort of did halfway through, Lindsay, you'd said, you're not eating enough protein, so put more protein in your diet. Mm -hmm. And I did, and then my, and I'm, I couldn't even believe it because I wasn't doing more or less of anything, but I guess I was less hungry for eating snacking and eating chocolate. So I lost another two kilos <laughs> without actually even trying, and I couldn't even believe it. It wasn't that I'd done it on purpose, uh -huh. it just happened. So making those small adjustments made a massive difference, and. I was, well, obviously really happy to have mm -hmm. lost a bit more weight. But by that point, the weight thing, and even at the start of that month of tracking things, my weight wasn't that important. It wasn't your goal. I remember no. you saying, I don't want to lose weight. I just want to maintain where I'm at yeah. and maybe get a little bit fitter. There yeah. was no, no numbers No, involved. it was nothing to do with the no. weight side of things because by that point in time, I'd reached my target and I felt happy. Mm -hmm. Everything at that point was around the exercise and the fitness and just feeling fitter mm -hmm. and healthier. So the fact that I'd lost weight as well was, I couldn't believe that I was even <laughs> losing weight during the lockdown when I wasn't moving so uh -huh. much. So it's yeah. incredible to think that during, was it, please um, correct me if I'm wrong, but were you four stone heavier in 2019? Yeah. So let's just, let's just think about that. Like, like, when I know, I actually Googled it this morning to see how many kilos it is because I was obviously I didn't necessarily know and it's 25 kilos and I can't believe that I was trying to run like carrying all of that extra weight no much wonder well, it was your go-to yeah your running was your yeah. go-to yeah you but to if I was it. to try and run with a 25 kilo bag on my back right now <laughs> I wouldn't be able to do that I don't think I would well I might be able to do it but I certainly wouldn't be happy about doing it yeah so f like four stone is a an incredible incredible amount of weight to lose and you did that at the start on your own just like you know, this is my time now, I need to get rid of this. Yeah. And even through that first lockdown, you had the motivation to keep going. Yeah. And now you've got to a point where you've said already, it's part of your life and your routine. And you're part of the 6.15 a.m. club. Like, what makes you get up at that time? I don't know, I just love it. I, I That's my routine now, to get up for that time in the morning. And sometimes I might be a couple of minutes late, but I always get here <laughs> and take part and... That's the routine that I've built into my life now. So mm -hmm. it doesn't, it's not an effort. It's not an effort at all to, 
to get here for that time in the morning and do a workout. And it makes you feel good for the rest of the day. One of the days during lockdown, there was a meeting that I had that meant I couldn't do my 6.15 workout. And I remember having a conversation with you, Lindsay, and I was like, oh my goodness, I felt terrible for the entire day because I didn't get my morning workout. So it, by lunchtime, I booked into one of the online classes to get my workout in at lunchtime. It was one of the express mm -hmm. classes because I just felt as though my day, my day was all to pop because it hadn't started off with the right routine and uh -huh. what, what I wanted to do. So yeah, the 6.15 thing, that's just how it starts for the yeah. day now and, and that works for me. It sets so. the tone. Yeah. Yeah. So you've got your nutrition down, you've got your, your exercise down. Is there a point at all where you feel that it's ever going to go away? The exercise, nutrition, I like, hope cause not. like before, no. <laughs> like just, I'll reframe that. Yeah. So before you were the person that exercised. Yeah. You did it, you enjoyed it, you loved it, um, you did it for charity, but then work took over. Now, do you feel you have the tools to? Def Definitely. Tell me about that. I've, I feel as though I've got a completely different mindset about it. I don't think, and I wouldn't ever want to be in the position where I allowed work to overtake everything else in my life. I don't know if that's, uh, that's down to a lot of things, but I guess the year that we've had and the changes that have come to everyone's life, life and fitness is so much more important than meeting your deadlines for me at work at least that's how I feel about it <laughs> that I would rather be happy and healthy and in a job that makes me happy in fact during the lockdown I actually quit the job that I was in because it didn't make me happy and yeah. not only because I had to miss one of my 650 <laughs> <laughs> that was just the final straw <laughs> that right? was the final straw that was it I'm <laughs> out we, here we've spoke about buckaroo a couple of times on this podcast that's, that was the last thing on that the buckaroo just kicked off <laughs> No, I wasn't happy in that job. It didn't, it just didn't make me happy. And, and with everything else that was going on and knowing that I can be happy, I just thought, no, this isn't for me. I'm going to make this change. So I've already got that mindset now where if, if work isn't doing the right thing for me, then I can change that. I shouldn't let that then change everything else in my life. So mm -hmm. I hope that there's never a time where I'll let work overtake so that I put on four stones. I never want to put on four stones ever again. But yeah, I think I've got the tools that I need to to carry on. Mm -hmm. And as long as I've got AKR with me on that journey as well, then I think I'll be fine. <laughs> I don't ever want to get back to where I'm not happy with my fitness again. It's an incredible like journey so far. So yeah, the 31st of August 2020, you've already had 200 visits. Oh, really? Really. <laughs> wow. Really. Like, that's a lot of visits. You guys must be sick of me. It's nearly 100 PT sessions. Oh, wow. I How does realize, that feel? I didn't realise that it was as much as that. That's great. But that's <laughs> the routine. That that I I guess I just enjoy it so much. I didn't even realise that I'd been here so many times. So, yeah. Yeah. But I, I don't want that to ever stop. I want to keep going. So. so, have you got any aspirations or goals in the gym at the moment? Or... Tell Not specifically, actually, just to get fitter and healthier. I think, well, I hurt my wrist recently, so I feel as though that was a bit of a setback for me. Sounds like there's a story there. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> well, a little bit of a story, I suppose. I've never, I had never been mountain biking And before. there's the story. <laughs> <laughs> and I went to a mountain biking holiday <laughs> and fell off the bike, obviously. But I did go to a mountain biking lesson beforehand. Just so the one. Just one. I didn't, and I Actually, where I fell, it wasn't. It was probably the easiest part of the whole mountain biking course that I could have fallen on. It was at the very end, and the gate just got in my way. Actually, the gate got in your way. <laughs> the gate got in my way. I kind of swerved to get out of the way of the gate and fell off the bike and landed on my wrist. And at the time, my wrist wasn't bruised, and there was nothing that I could see. It obviously, I landed on it. I knew that it was painful, but my legs were all bruised. Everything else was bruised, but my my wrist was fine, apart from the fact that it hurt. Um, so it wasn't fine. It, it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't <laughs> fine. You're right. But it wasn't. It was. It was bad. It wasn't as bad. Well, in my head, it wasn't as bad as the rest of me. That was all battered and bruised. Anyway, of course, I carried on mountain biking. I went mountain biking again the next day, and luckily, I didn't fall the next day. So that was all good. But yeah, I came to the gym and went to Saturday circuits, and I was doing burpees and doing all sorts of things, and thinking, yeah, this is mm. a little bit painful. Then on the Monday, I think I was in a session with you, Lindsay, and I was like, oh, I can't lift this weight. It's too heavy mm -hmm. for my wrist. It's really hurting. 
and you were like, maybe you should see the doctor about that. So I've had it x-rayed. Obviously, the x-ray took such a long time to get done that the wrist is repaired now. Whether it was ever broken, we'll probably never know for sure. <laughs> but um, yeah. So, so did you, you continued to train? Yes, absolutely. So I'd gone to the doctor, as you advised, <laughs> and the doctor told me that I had to go and get an x-ray done and it was likely that there was a, a, a hairline fracture. So I just needed to rest it and not go to the gym. That was a panic moment for me because I could, couldn't imagine not coming to the gym and not, I didn't want to stop the routine and I, I thought if I stop maybe I'm not going to be able to start again and I was actually really scared. Even thinking about it now it makes me upset. So I sent a panic email to Lindsay going, oh my goodness, the doctor says that my wrist, wrist is probably broken and that I've got to stop coming to the gym. And I'm talking panic. It was yeah. real panic. panic. Almost capital yeah, panic. You yeah, can, you can it see was, it. I was really distressed by this. So it, it, your motivation is, is taking a hit at this point. Yeah, your, absolutely. Your, your identity is almost taking a hit Yeah, it's because it's that, who you are. That routine and that thing that was making me happy and the thing that I really enjoyed doing the doctor told me not to do it so I was like oh my goodness so yeah my panic email was sent to Lindsay and obviously you sensed how much panic I was in and called me calm down it's all gonna be okay (laughs) Um, Jill it's Lindsay I got your email (laughs) tears yeah so anyway mostly Lindsay's (laughs) Of course, Lindsay reassured me that there was nothing to worry about and that we would just adjust the session in the gym and that it would all work out and be mm-hmm. okay. And true to her word, the next morning I was in the gym and we were in a smaller group up at the back of the gym. Everything was adjusted and the what I could do was... Um, t- what I could do and what I was able to manage was taken into account and of course you then let the other coaches know that. So whenever I came into the gym for the last month and a half really everything's been adjusted for me to mm-hmm. be able to still do my PT sessions. Can you imagine, what, what do you think would have happened if that wasn't the case and you just had to rest? I would have probably cried. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I don't even want to imagine what it would have been like, actually. I think I would have gone into some sort of depression of not being able to I don't know what I would have done. I could have still run because mm. obviously... That's your go-to. That's my go-to. <laughs> I could still go out for a run or walk, but that... The th- I do love coming to the gym, mm-hmm. so I really felt as though taking that away, even though I have still been coming, I do feel as though I haven't been doing as much and, and I'm aware of that. So I have been going out and walking more and running more to try and compensate for the fact that I can't be in the gym quite as much as I would like to be. Mm-hmm. But I've... but. I think it's healed now (laughs) so I'm back I feel like I'm back to my normal again and I was uh, I didn't come to Saturday circuits yesterday because I thought that might have been too much but I did go to the I did go to the um boot camp in the park at Duffy Park yesterday and and everything was pretty much okay so yeah so just before we move on from there previously the previous Jill would would you have taken that rest and just stopped yeah, I would have. I would have. I wouldn't have. I would have done what the doctor told me, uh-huh. and there would have been no panic about it. I would have probably actually breathed a sigh of relief at the fact that I didn't have to go and do the, the exercise, and that someone had given me permission to not do it. <laughs> <laughs> basically, <laughs> so yeah, that would have been a different story mm-hmm. altogether. And then it would have likely been that that would have got out of control, and it would have been months before I would yeah. have got back into it again. But yeah, I but you did the right thing. I didn't want that to happen. No. You reached out. We can work around it, and now we're we're healing. We're healing. Yes. yes. Um, is there? I think I remember you recalling through the the second lockdown, there was a period of time where you felt you were maybe getting to a point of burning out. Just remembered that. Yeah. Was that something that? T- talk to us about that. Yeah. So obviously, I had lost. I'd got to my target weight uh-huh. and I felt really great about that and my levels of fitness were improving and I felt and I felt really good. I felt good about myself and I felt happy. Um, and I put that down to just being able to work out all the time. So I did work out as much as I possibly could. So I loved the workouts that we did in Zoom in the mornings. I wanted to do the Saturday circuit sessions with you, Jace. I wanted to do everything, not believe ev- it or not. Not everybody <laughs> says that. No, <laughs> I know. Believe it or not, I actually did very much look forward to why, it. Why so. is it you, you wanted to do these things? I just really, I enjoy it. I, I guess I, li- I liked how I felt afterwards. It made me feel mm-hmm. good. It made me feel as though it was a great start to the day. I felt energised. I felt happy. I would, I, it just had such a positive 
effect on how I felt about myself mm -hmm. and my clothes fitted better everything just was better everything felt good I felt good and did that feeling help you continue yeah to, definitely to, and I think that's what the problem is was it yeah so um, and, I, and there was probably also a fear that if I stopped doing it again like the fear that I had after damaging my wrist if I stopped doing it it would all go away it's all gonna go mm. and I don't ever want for that to happen so I just kept on doing it and I would basically not take any days off so I would do my 6.15 workouts Monday to Friday we would have Saturday circuits on a Saturday and then I'd go out for a run on Sunday not just any run though but it would be quite long runs because we were training for a half marathon as well so we were I was just doing everything I'm trying. Born, I would just listen I know same <laughs> but tell then, about it but I just wanted to do everything because it did make me feel good but I was also scared that I was going to put four stone on if I stopped basically <laughs> So, yeah, there was a conversation that we had during one of the weekly check-ins. And I, you, because we were using this spreadsheet to track everything, you were like, where's your rest days? And I was like, well, these runs are not really big runs. They're small ones. Lindsay's telling me that's a ridiculous thing. You just got to take some rest. Mm -hmm. Why don't you not do the circuits on Saturday? And I was like, but I really do like the circuits on Saturday. Well, then take your Fridays off and take a break because that will make Saturday circuits even more enjoyable. And it, it really did, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> so maybe I was feeling a little bit burnt out on a Saturday, but I still wanted to do Saturday, Saturday circuits. Mm -hmm. After having a Friday off, instead of doing my 6.15 PT in the morning, I would go out for a run or I would maybe do some yoga. I would still do something that wasn't oh. as extreme, which meant that I had the energy to to put into other things as well mm -hmm. so yeah and actually I'm so glad that again if I go back to the doctor telling me not to do anything before I would have been happy to be told to not do any exercise I was very reluctant <laughs> to not do <laughs> that's completely that. flipped absolutely I was very reluctant to not take that exercise to take to take the time off and to mm -hmm. not do the exercise but it was a hundred percent the correct advice and it and, and, and I'm more aware, aware of it now that if I am feeling a bit tired, then I will, I can, I can tell when I need to take a bit of a break now, whereas I wouldn't have known before because mm -hmm. I wasn't taking a break. Yeah. More in tune with it all. Yeah. Not so just that's... exercise, but nutrition. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Is there anything that we've not covered that you would like to speak about? I think the only other thing was to just mention the rest side of things. That yeah. it is, I think out of everything, I've learned so much being part of, AKR with regards to nutrition and exercise and how to do things properly but don't underestimate a rest <laughs> <laughs> no, is that your final leaving words for the <laughs> listeners the final leaving words don't <laughs> underestimate how important rest is Brilliant. yeah <laughs> Lindsay happy with that Jill it's been an absolute pleasure thank you very much Jill guys. it's been lovely having you on it's a pleasure having you at AKR and thank it's you. been really really great to hear your story and side of things so thanks for coming on and thank you for letting me tell my story thank <laughs> you very much thanks Jill <laughs> folks if you've enjoyed Jill's story and you think we can maybe help you out reach out we'll have a chat it's akrfitness.com or you can just slide on into our DMs <laughs> If you are on our DMs and you feel like taking a screenshot and sharing it to the world, please use the hashtag Energizing Life Podcast. Oh, I thought you almost messed that no, up. No, not this time. <laughs> not this time. All right, that's all from us, folks, and we will see you on the next one.